This video was made possible by you. If you want to save time and support what I do, check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can purchase the source file for what we're creating in this video, as well as other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for your support and let's get back to the video. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a sort of button micro interaction that will show the icon on the right after you hover over the button. So here's basically what I'm thinking. Yeah. So let's say we have a button that has no icon on the left or right. And then when you hover over it, you are going to see some kind of icon appear. And maybe we get an animation here. It's going to like grow in size gradually. You're going to see the whole animation taking place and you're going to see something. So how do we achieve that? Let's take a look. So this video is a part of a series on mobile app design and in the masterclass in the initial video, which is this one, and you should definitely go and watch it. We have created this button, this basic button, right? If you use the button as a component, you can use different icons. So we have all these, all these nice little icons that we have also created, but you don't need all that just for this. So if you want to see how we created this component we're going to be using right now, go and check out the original video, but it's essentially just a text with two icons in an auto layout. Well, so it's fairly simple. You should be able to create it on your own, but if you're not, go and watch that. It's fairly straightforward. So let's do it. Let's take a look at how we can achieve this in Figma. I am going to disable the left icon, right? We are going to be basically what's going to happen here is we're going to take this component and then create another component out of that. So this is going to be a component that's going to be called like, I don't know, button with the left icon, with the right icon appearing once you hover over it. But we're going to think about some better name than that. Okay, let's change the text to hover over me then change the right icon to icon right arrow. So now we got this sort of a final state. Yeah, cool. And as I said, we're going to be create another component on top of this one. So let's go to here to these three dots on the top right next to the button name. And let's create a component. So right now we have a component called button that contains a component called button. But just to make it very clear, those are very two different things. This is basically the situation we have, right? Just really make sure we're on the same page. This is what's basically happening, right? I'm going to rename this to what could be the best name button underscore icon icon on hover. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So the component button icon on hover contains the button component. And now we are going to be creating another variant of this component. So let's just click this plus icon that says add variant. Let's click that. And now we have two variants of this component. Okay. We are going to be changing the component properties. So with this selected, let's go to properties. And then under the name, let's say state. And we are going to have two states. Whoops. We are going to have two states. We're going to have the default. They don't have to type it over, but anyway, and then we're going to have hover. Okay. This is the default one, right? This is the hover one. Now, what do I do next? I am going to select the icon right component within this button component within this variant, right? So I'm going to select that. And what I'm going to do is simply I'm going to hide it. Right, I'm going to hide it like this. And then I am going to go to prototype, click on the first variant of this component and connect it like this to the second one. And I'm going to say very simply while hovering change to state hover. And this is going to be smart animate ease out. And it's going to be what? 
I think 200 milliseconds is about right. So let's take this component and let's use it in a design and let's see if it actually, if it actually looks good. All right. So let's go to the prototype. It is here. By the way, I have created this nice micro interaction for adding an item to a cart. So if you want to see how we've done this, check one of my previous videos in this playlist. It's pretty sweet. And additionally, we have also created all these animated interactive components. So we've been creating a, quite a bunch of stuff for your mobile app design. So make sure to go check that out. If you're interested, go check the playlist in the description. Okay, and if I hover over this button now, this is what happens, right? And we are mostly there. We could call it a day, but let's say you want to do like a kind of more advanced animation. Let's say that you want the icon to appear as if it's flying in from the left. Right now, the icon is appears in place, but if we want to just make it just a little bit nicer. What we have to do is select the button component, then we have to actually detach it. And then in the second variant, we also going to have to detach it. Okay, so command option B to detach a component. And right now on the icon, let's turn it to absolute position or also known as ignore auto layout. That's the first time I'm seeing this, by the way, this new label. And I'm going to just move it somewhere around where the text ends. Yeah. And now let's see what happens. Nothing really happens. What we need to do next is also set ignore auto layout to this second variant. You no, know, but then we have to compensate for this button being shorter. So let's just add some more padding on the right side, 56, let's say, and let's try again. Let's let me reset the prototype. And it's still not working. So we're doing something wrong. Let's show the icon and let's see if that, okay. Ah, so I know what's the issue, right? The issue is that we've been hiding it all together instead of just reducing the opacity to zero. So let's reduce the opacity to zero. And now we should finally get what we want. Nice. This is exactly what I wanted to go for. And as you can see, this is all there is to Figma or to design in general. You just have to try and fail and work backwards and try to reverse engineer the problem. That's how you make it work, right? So we have this nice little interaction where if you hover over the button, you get this arrow or this icon that we can change. By the way, we can change this. Of course, we can change this to instead of icon right, it could be like a check mark. You know, let's try again with a check mark, check mark. And now we get this. So that's pretty nice, pretty flexible. Yep. And it's a separate component now available in our design system. And if you'd like to get the source file for this, but also not only this, but all of this that we have created in this masterclass and in the upcoming videos, check the link in the description and buy it from my store. You will save time and support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.